you got me today on this one, you know. <laughs> uh, if my if my attorney knew I was in this room, he would be outside your door, found <laughs> <laughs> I'm Arizona Family political editor Dennis Welch. Dennis, fake news Welch, try to tell the truth. And this is the Politics Unplugged podcast. Dennis, if you have a problem with substance abuse, I am more than willing to talk to you anytime you need. All right, and welcome back to the podcast. And and today I really feel kind of honored um, to have a guest here that I've known for quite quite a while now. Um, you know, former speaker Rusty Bowers. And before we jump into this conversation, I mean, I think most people kind of know uh, Mr. Bowers for his role um, testifying, you know, before Congress regarding the former president, Donald Trump's um, a, a alleged attempted efforts to overturn the elections. His name has been brought up in a lot of these indictments. And I believe a lot of people, you know, probably know Mr. Bowers from all that, but uh, just a real quick crash course. And that Mr. Bowers has a long uh, career in public service. Um, he goes back a ways. Um, and uh, I've always thought, and maybe, you know, uh, he can correct me if I'm wrong, but I always thought of Mr. Bowers as the kind of lawmaker who used to come kind of with a lunch pail to the legislature and do the real heavy lifting of what lawmakers used to do that didn't get a lot of headlines. It was the stuff with like land use and like water use and things like that. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking to him about that and talking about how, th- how things have changed over there and uh, get some thoughts about what's been happening with him, you know, recently. And with that, I want to introduce, uh, you know, former speaker Rusty Bowers. Thank you very much uh, for joining us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Said this. So- Spider to the fly. <laughs> <laughs> so was I wrong though in like your introduction? Because no, I, I mean, right. I always thought like you know you were the guy like you weren't uh-huh. down there trying to make headlines. In fact, I always thought you were, you know, you weren't anti-media, but you didn't want to be part of like the 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 story of the day that was some salacious story of the day. You were like down there to work and and do that stuff like land use and you know water mm-hmm. and all that kinds of stuff. Well, Maybe I'm wrong. I consider that a, a compliment. Yeah, and, and I, I think so. It's a, d- a different kind of, of lawmaker. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested because, I, you know, uh, we can get into this a little bit later, but sometimes you think like the, 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 the younger lawmaker that comes into now, they think their job is just to run bills and maybe to get headlines. But there was a lot more to lawmaking, um, I think, uh, than just that, correct? Yes, and there are 90, 90 legislators mm-hmm. and 90 different personalities mm-hmm. and a good supply of that crew uh, may kind of like the lights and, and, uh, but there's a whole bunch that don't. And even though we are in, we were, I should say that it's too tempting to fall back into mm-hmm. present, but we were of different, um, partisan backgrounds mm-hmm. For those that wanted to get something done or had a peculiar interest or maybe prepped uh, by their life's experience in something, whether it was social work or land planning or uh, utilities, Mm -hmm. they wanted to do it. And Mm -hmm. and so getting those together and saying, okay, this is not super partisan. Let's where's the center and let's move forward. Yeah, and you know, I was I was speaking to somebody, you know, and, and first of all, I know if people are tuning in, they're they're going to want to hear me right off the bat start asking about the Trump stuff. Stuff, and we'll we'll get into some of that a little bit later with the warning that he is Mr. Bowers is very limited on what he can say about that. But uh, going back to that, I mean, I was speaking to a former lawmaker a couple weeks ago. I won't mention his name because I don't know if I have, you know have permission to to mention this. But what what they were telling me was, you know, they think that the new lawmaker today, they think it is just you come down. And you run bills, but you know there's a lot more to it that you have to meet with people in the community, and a lot of things that can be fixed can be fixed without legislation. I mean, what do you think is the biggest difference between that you've seen over the years between when you first started and now? Is that one of them? I, there, I, I cannot remember a single member when I first came that was an activist mm-hmm. that had on their resume. I'm a community activist, or I work for this organization as an activist. And from all over the state, 
and I think of the guys down from Yuma and, and some really fun people. And unfortunately, <laughs> a whole bunch of those people have passed on. And, uh, and uh, my wife kind of looks at me, you know, you're getting a little long in the tooth over there. Uh. But <laughs> oh, my God. You look great. In fact, oh, thanks. Yeah. our meteorologist, Sean McLaughlin, was complimenting you when you were on your way up here, saying that you look you look. He great. just thought it was the, the setting sun that I was, I was silhouetted against. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I mean, there is a difference between you know, uh, you know what, 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 how business used to get done back then and, and today. I mean, you said you, you never saw a new lawmaker come in with the resume, uh, with an activist on their resume. You also never saw freshman lawmakers head committees. You came into legislature at least even when I first started reporting on politics. Like freshman lawmakers are told to sit down, shut up, and learn something, and now they're coming in and they're running committees. Well, I can't. I was, I guess, if your first two terms, you're still a freshman, but I was a committee chair my second year okay. of uh, government operations when uh, Jane Hall okay. moved and they had a big hole. <laughs> and so they stuck me in there, and Greg Patterson had taught me well the first uh, year. And, you know, I was older, I was plus 40. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think that that has some effect on a guy. Mm -hmm. In my case, it's has a huge effect on a guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and, and, and you're always a, like a very strong, you know, Republican lawmaker. Like what attracted you to the party? You know, what did the party stand for when you first came into office? I, I think both parties were very, were more conservative. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what conservative means in the common vernacular today. Yeah. Um, my family was very oriented towards virtues mm -hmm. like honesty, work, mm -hmm. training, education, uh, things like that, that had a commonality of basic fundamental life worked into them. And, I, and so did everybody else. Mm -hmm. But through time, um, I think there's been some changes. Mm -hmm. Granted, we're, when I think of my kids, I say, you know, we had our, our party line phone and you dial and I might as well be talking like I was from Jupiter <laughs> and, and how far, how much the changes are just phenomenal. Now, in, as far as working with people, the tactic of volume and speed mm -hmm. equals truth. Mm -hmm. And now you talk, no, I, I don't, I don't buy that, but that's what a lot of people practice. How loud can I say it and how fast can I say it and how many punchy words can I say that makes me sound like I, I'm wise. And, and I, that's a challenge because rhetoric is an art, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And, and the ability to make truth out of words, mm -hmm. that's, that's a hard thing to well, swallow. I mean, yeah, I mean, because there is that idea of like, if I'm louder than you and I more, sound more confident than you, then damn it, I'm right, <laughs> right? And, and sometimes like, no, you know, you sound confident, you're very loud, but you can still be a moron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proof positive. <laughs> but how, how, how was that? Because a speaker, I mean, you, you were in charge of, you know, your caucus, you're in charge of 60 people. Um, you ran that for a couple of years, a few years as speaker. What was that like? Well, that was a great honor. Mm -hmm. And, and you don't do anything alone in the legislature. Yeah. And uh, I feel for my friend, Ben, uh, Toma, Speaker Toma, a very qualified, a man of uh, a, a more quiet dignity, um, very principled, and he has to walk very carefully, and because mm -hmm. he has a job, mm -hmm. his job isn't necessarily just to get the budget, mm -hmm. which is the only function in I believe mentioned in statute, but he has you know 130, 40, 50 employees. Mm -hmm. He has the members that he has to care for, their security. Mm -hmm. Even though they may complain that he's doing something out untoward in, in enforcing their security. But it's a big job. And uh, you have great staff. He's got great staff. I was blessed with great staff and uh, great assistants. Uh, so it's the surrounding people around you that kind of help keep the ark moving forward with all the animals hanging out the window. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I do got to ask you then. You know, uh, you know, re Republican your whole life, Republican House Speaker. 
did you ever think you'd find yourself in that position where you had to stand up to a Republican president and say, no, I am not going to do this for you. I am not going to help you overturn an election that's against it's against my my, my ethics, my my code, my 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 morals. I, I'm very, very. Can I say that one more time? Mm -hmm. Very hesitant to give any cast any thought on how I think about that situation. Mm -hmm. All I know is what happened. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm, it's kind of, I'm not paid to think beyond this is what happened. Mm -hmm. It's for others to determine a, a judgment on what happened. And I, because this is a big deal. It is. I, and, and people can go back and look at the, all the interviews and all that, and I would encourage them to do so. But you, Mr. Spider. <laughs> I'm not a spider. <laughs> you pulled me into the web here, and I shouldn't have walked through that door. <laughs> but I really have no comment. Uh, yeah, I, I, well, I mean, you have been asked a lot about that. I'm, you know, uh, and you said it's up, up to other people to decide. And a lot of people, I would say you, you were given an award, a medal. Um, a citizenship medal from the current president for, for, for standing up for, for that. I mean, you've got to have some, some thoughts about what, what you went through now looking back. And there will be a time when I'd like to talk about that mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it is an honor that the office of the president extends these awards to the people. Um, it was an honor for my wife and I to stand in rooms where how many first ladies mm -hmm. used that particular room mm -hmm. and, and how many people stood by that doorway and looked out on the, or that window and looked out over the ellipse and the Washington Memorial. And it, it was a great honor. But again, to, to take any judgment on my part other than I was honored that there's so much happening in our country uh, nationally, internationally, with our involvement in conflicts mm -hmm. that will require a, a level of judgment and wisdom that is at times hard to see, and how critical more and more that thing is, is prudence and wisdom and knowing that how many lives and families depend on you making the right decision. So when we make our decisions, you don't have a lot of time, Dennis. Mm -hmm. you, you, you got me today on this one, you know. <laughs> uh, if, my, if my attorney knew I was in this room, he would be outside your door, found him. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is this. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the state, a wonderful state, everybody has some level of integrity. None of us are perfect. I don't see any fluttering, you know, going by the window. But you don't get a day or two days or two weeks for someone to say, I'm going to ask you a question that's going to question your integrity at this time. Mm -hmm. It's now. It's right now. Mm -hmm. And so when they come, we have to be ready. And, you'll, and we'll act one way or the other, which we will, and we'll see how it all works out. You paid a hell of a price for that split second, that, that split second decision. It was actually about three and a half seconds. I <laughs> thought of it later. Three and a half seconds. Out of a long conversation. Yeah, you but. paid one heck of a price for that. It cost you your, your political career. And then it cost you, uh, you know, some, a, lot of, a lot of strife at the home front with people protesting your house, people attacking you on social media. Um, you, you went through. I learned a lot of vocabulary that, I haven't, <laughs> that I'm unfamiliar with, really. <laughs> yeah, you learned that uh, you know Rusty Bowers was a rhino, a Republican in name only. I, I mean, well, I mean, I, I joke about that because like you know you were you are a strong when I think of you know uh, you know uh, quintessential old school conservative. That's what you are. That hasn't changed. I I would hope not. Yeah. I'd hope not. But I hope that I can. I that you're. Not, I'm not so stayed in some ideological entrenchment. Uh, as George Cunningham used to say, I, that I can't see now, you know what, given the, the facts of today, maybe we need to build the bridge over there mm -hmm. instead of here. Mm 
mm-hmm. there are things that we can learn and that we can, over time, question. Psychotropic drugs was a big one for me. Mm-hmm. What, and somebody said, what? That's the guy with the, with the lunch bucket mm-hmm. who came and started learning about something that was totally new to him. And it's how important that little thing is to a whole bunch of people. And, and so, you know, Dennis, as you, as you go along, I hope a lot of people have the same experience of being in the legislature. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I hope that more people will watch and evaluate the personalities and the character of people that they look at in mm-hmm. the legislature. Mm-hmm. Uh, because there are huge consequences, and they get bigger all the time. Mm-hmm. So, and and yeah, I, I you know I I am wondering you know politically what have you learned through all all this? I mean, obviously you've probably been asking. I'll ask it you know again if if you know uh, Donald Trump wins this nomination this year, would would you vote for him? I'm not going to answer that question, but you're a great guy, Dennis, and I'm so glad. <laughs> I know, but why won't you answer the question? Though? I mean, it's fair. That's, you don't have I've to. I've already answer it. answered the question. Yeah. Okay. I've already answered that question. Okay. Many times. Remind me. I'm not going to remind you. <laughs> Just go back and you'll see. Because you worked for him. You worked for him. I you did. worked very hard for him. You stood on stage with him. You've reminded people on that. And you were just talking about learning and not wanting to be stayed. I mean, given the chance again, would you do the same for this man a second time I'm, around? I'm, again, Dennis, we're, we're not going to pivot and come back at this from a different <laughs> angle. Oh, you can. But you're going to get the same center. The same center is I've already said what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. That's, that's fair enough. Fair and enough. at some time I'll, I'll just come right out and be able to talk about that again. But, but there's legalities and, and things that are coming mm-hmm. require a legitimacy on the part of who's being asked questions mm-hmm. that they, ha- that they don't have some agenda mm-hmm. that they're not trying to cause harm mm-hmm. or that there's no vengeance I, I, I want to be as straight as I can be. You don't want to and t- as dispassionate yeah. as I can be. Just that I will recite what happened, and when it's all over, I will be able to say, "Well, my opinion is this." You come back here. <laughs> it will have an opinion. <laughs> come back here to the pod with opinions, um, and you, you know, maybe maybe adjacent to that. I don't know. Maybe it's in the same boat you're just saying. Um, You've seen a lot of people in other states has been, you know, indicted, you know, uh, because of, you know, the former president's alleged efforts to overturn uh, the election, like in Michigan and whatnot. Are you surprised that hasn't happened here in Arizona yet? Um, I have no comment. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> you're, you're, you're sticking with that one. <laughs> well, look, I do, I do respect that. I mean, I understand. And I just, Let's I, talk I, water, Dennis. We've got, you, you got us sitting here. Water, I hear, is a big deal. Um, but, like, you know. <laughs> it's a big deal, Dennis. <laughs> well, I hear it's for fighting. I hear whiskey's for fun and water that there, that there is for fighting. And, and you know, before I let you go, um, you know, I, I just want to say I, I tried my best to get a little bit more out of you there on, on some of that stuff. I do respect that, you know, you want to stay silent on that and that, you you, you, you know, you don't want to taint yourself as being, coming off as sounding like some person with some sort of agenda or anything. You just want to be able to, to tell the facts. Um, but you are staying in, and we'll, we'll end it on this, you are staying in, you know, uh, the public arena to a certain extent. You are involved um, currently with some water policy. You've got, uh, you got, you were appointed, I believe, by the governor? Uh, I do not sit on her commission. Okay, okay. But our, our company that mm-hmm. I work for does okay. and or is represented as a representation of water interests mm-hmm. in the state. Mm-hmm. And we just had a meeting now and are trying to plod along working out legislative opportunities. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and as I look forward to when I can legally start talking to people in the legislature <laughs> for compensation, <laughs> <laughs> that will be a great and very important conversation that I hope that Arizona is preparing for okay. um, all the things that we're going to need to do. And uh, one final question before I let you go. Um, are you done with elected politics? Do you think you could jump back in? Um, Lori Roberts, the columnist over at the Arizona Republic, <laughs> says you should run for the U.S. Senate. Uh, is that a possibility? Hey, Lori, <laughs> she is a great opinion writer. And, uh, and it's, it's fun. And I'm, you know, I'm flattered. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, life comes, life comes at you. It just comes, keeps coming at you. So would not say yes or no to maybe making a run at the U.S. Senate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have, a, a, I'm blessed with an incredible family, just a quintessential family, positives, negatives, bunch of great characters. Mm-hmm. And I am, I'm enjoying them. I know that everybody has responsibilities. And um, we'll just see how life goes. But currently I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hope I can be in some civil service by doing that well thank you very much for joining us here and uh i cannot wait until this is you're through all of this and can come back here and start uh you know espousing your opinions (laughs) on everything (laughs) that's happened thank you very much thank you thank you very much we're back here with uh you know producer extraordinaire colin colin um say hi to everybody hi hey, so, <laughs> so what so you know, so I, I gotta ask you what, what your big takeaways were from the interview with mr bowers um one he's always such a, a thoughtful person mm-hmm. he, i mean he really he he will not speak off the cuff he he puts deep thought into everything he says the other thing is he's clearly in the middle of these investigations and and there's a lot going on because he won't he won't give you anything on the ongoing investigation oh he was clear about that and why i mean he said he wanted to be straight as an arrow he said he did not want anybody to see him as having an agenda or be vengeful in any way so he is truly trying to clear like steer clear of answering any questions i press yeah. him as much as i could yes uh you he know, called I'm, you a spider I, three or four times yes uh, and he was the fly and i was trying to lure yeah. him into my web i yeah. i i i was yeah I, <laughs> that's and kind of failed, our job right you, yeah, you yeah. know that you got as close as you could <laughs> so get he wasn't that, gonna do it that said it's clear he wants to talk more about yes. it you can hear it he just says yes. one day one day i'll be able to speak more about this yes yeah, well, he has our number. <laughs> when that day comes, hopefully he, he can he can join us again. So I, you know, I, I really hope everybody enjoyed that conversation. He really is an interesting guy. Yes, I've covered him for a long time. I mean, not only has he been a lawmaker for a while, but a lot of people may not know this about it. Uh, maybe you do. I don't know. He's somewhat of an artist as well. He's into hmm. sculpting and painting and doing all that kind of stuff. And huh. um, you can see some of his works actually down at the, the state capitol in the legislature. Huh. I didn't know that. So, yeah, in, a really interesting cat. Really interesting cat. So let's uh, pivot away from that. And okay. uh, let's pivot back to, you know, what has become kind of a tradition in our, our, our the young life of this podcast route. Uh, and, and let's let's do something that's completely not political re- politically related yes. here. And I want to bring in our sports guy, sport, sports extraordinaire, Mark McClune. Oh, you, oh I, I was hiding up here watching the game, so I don't have to do probably any work downstairs. Checking the, probably checking the betting lines, I guess. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see if the Lions, <laughs> we got the Lions and the Chiefs going on right now. The Chiefs yeah. without Travis Kelsey struggling a little bit. And, yeah, I um, – yeah, when are we going to start our own podcast about I don't, De- I don't what did, know. how much money did Dennis lose this weekend <laughs> betting on local teams? <laughs> so I, I got to say, like the, the shoes on the other foot. Uh, you know, McClune pulled me into his podcast uh, yeah. f- a few weeks ago. I, you know, I'm pulling him into this. We literally, Colin and I, kidnapped him. Yes. He's a very busy man right now, <laughs> and he did not know this was coming. We were waiting outside the podcast doors. He finished his. Because we have a list of football questions we thought we would discuss for the start of the NFL season. We're one week into the college season. Well, it's always fitting, too, because I'll go to Colin and be like, hey, um, tell me everything you know about the NBA. And your NBA knowledge is so vast. Well, and you. there are, I mean, like, like there's, there's five things I haven't even thought of. <laughs> so... I'm going to have to well, pull good. you in as well. Yeah. That sounds good. I'll yeah. be happy to do that. My yeah. NFL knowledge, not... Not there with the so NBA. Yeah, n- now but, we're going to bombard him with yes. questions he's not prepared for. He he's not coming. prepared for any of these questions. Is this in, like incriminating? Is this? Are you trying to lure me into your web? Spider? Yes. The yes. spider so web. The spider yes. is back. You'll, you'll know. You'll know when it comes. <laughs> All, right. All right. Question number one. We'll yeah. start easy. Who wins the Super Bowl this year? Chiefs. Chiefs. Yes. Cardinals. Man, <laughs> play that back. For God's sake. If you were right, um, you, I'm going to go Bills. Okay, I, I'm going to go Bills this year. 
I will I will go Chiefs. My dark horse would be 49ers. Yeah. But I think Chiefs. I, I wonder if Brock Purdy is going to hold up for the entire and season. That, yes. Because, you know, he did, we, we went to Mexico City last year for the Cardinals and the Niners, and he, he wasn't even in the, in yet, and that was right before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Then he caught fire, and it's something we've been seeing since high school here at Perry Local, High. Local phenom. Yeah. Yes. Brock, Brock Purdy. A great story if he can do it. But yeah. it's, yeah, if without him, that would be tricky. All right, who's the league MVP? Um, Mahomes. Do you, do, I was going to pick another Cardinal. Do you need another Cardinal quarterback? <laughs> our, our suggested you were going to name a Cardinal, you gonna name a Cardinal just... but you couldn't come up with one? Clayton Toon, okay. MVP. No, no, I'm joking. Do, do, you okay. like, do you like like when we say it on the air if we're like Clayton Toon? Is that? I thought about that. Okay, I just tried it out Sunday on our post-game show. I'm going to try it, and would you all text me if it works? Yeah, we'll give you a thumbs up on that. Look, you got to go with the reigning king, right? He's the king until he's knocked off. Patrick Mahomes. Holmes I don't see any reason an to go with anyone other than Mahomes. Okay, um, best football movie. Oh man, um, the program. Huh? Oh, with Latimer. Okay, not a bad yeah. one. Not a bad one. Yeah. North Dallas Forty. Oh, okay. Okay. Nick Nolte with smoking Nick in the Nolte. hot tub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. Um, and I'll go the original uh, longest yard. Burt Reynolds. Not so, bad. Not boom. bad. Not bad. The machine. Yeah. Uh, worst football movie. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go. Uh, there are a lot Adam, of them. Adam Sandler. As much as the Lawrence Taylor scene was hilarious, I had much higher expectations for the Water Boy. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna disagree with that, but I'm gonna go with Any Given Sunday. Interesting. That was cringeworthy. My man. name is Steve. That was my, that's cringeworthy. <laughs> the, and Pacino in his yes in his uh, chewing the scenery. Era. Yeah. Uh, wasn't it the last Boy Scout that had the running back shooting yes. people? Yeah, Bruce Willis and uh, yeah. oh my gosh, and one of the Wayans brothers. What was what was what was his name? Was it was Marlon? The, uh, I think it was Damon. Was it is Damon in that? It's well, one of the Wayans brothers. Well, who, what was the quarterback's name? And what was Bruce Willis's name? I don't remember. It was a great name. I don't remember. God, I can't believe you need, nobody. Hang on. Nobody brought up Goldie Hawn and Wildcats. Oh, that's great. <laughs> was was Woody Harrelson the quarterback? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Woody Harrelson was yes. the quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's the the movie with uh, Kathy Ireland as the kicker. Oh, t- fumble, fumble, <laughs> liar, fumble, <laughs> right. I yes. couldn't decide whether that would be best or worst. Much so. like Wildcats. Um, while he looks up this, yes, uh, this okay. This one was Dennis's idea: best yeah. athlete turned politician. Man, um. <laughs> I know it's a it's an unfair question. I mean, because I studied his uh, who had the who had like the most successful, so we'd probably have to say Gerald Ford because he was the president. Oh yeah, okay, okay. yeah. Not bad. I mean, it wasn't voted in as president, but Michigan. he became the He's yeah lineman, Michigan right? man. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, who else are we thinking of? I mean, you had J.C. Watts and Steve Largent. Yeah, twenty years ago. Yeah, had... and that's if you're just sticking to football. It was yeah. technically best athlete, but for, for Bill football, Bradley, but Bill, Bill Bradley, Bradley was, was the, the standout for me. Yeah, um, and and uh, the first President Bush was a baseball player at Yale. That's right. So yeah, okay. So was uh, Ron DeSantis, also a baseball player at Yale. Okay. Was he really? Yep. Interesting. Yaley, uh, most overrated current NFL player. Oh. Um. <laughs> well, does injury factor into that? <laughs> I leave it to you. Most overrated. Pe- people will say Dak. I I really want to see Dak succeed this year. Yeah. I think a new offensive coordinator will help. But I I think Dak would probably win that award at this okay. point. But I'm cheering for him this year. Okay. I'm gonna agree and say Dak. I will not be cheering for him this year. <laughs> I cannot stand the Cowboys. <laughs> I um, cannot stand the Cowboys at all. I'm going to go with Jimmy Garoppolo, given that he's still a starting quarterback in the NFL. Jimmy G. Um, Jimmy GQ. How's he going to do in Vegas, by the way? I feel like that's a... I think he'll... Yeah. Probably not very well. Wasn't yeah. he the guy dating okay. the porn star? He wa- that, doesn't that fit in Vegas? It does, yeah. That's like half that's of Vegas, was, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Fairly perfect fit. I've not been in a while. Maybe it's changed. <laughs> All-time most overrated player. Oh, and uh, it's got to be Bosworth. Brian Bosworth. Oh yeah, Ooh, that is the, a good one. Oh yeah, that is a real good. I had a good one. good conversation with Ricky Williams on the Extra Point podcast this week about because <laughs> there were these shirts when I was at UT of Ricky, the Heisman Trophy winner, and had the dreadlocks on it, and they got sued by the Heisman Trophy, and I, and I was like, 
we were talking about it, and I said, you aren't in on that deal like Bosworth. Because remember when Bosworth in college made shirts that yeah. said, I hate Bosworth, and sold them and made money off them? <laughs> well, you know, I, originally when I was thinking about this, I was thinking like Tony Mandridge. Yes. Remember that guy? The yeah. Incredible Bulk. The Incredible oh, Bulk. Yeah, the Incredible Who Bulk. Who showed up oddly oh. um, smaller yes. <laughs> between college and the pros. And yeah. I believe someone in the front office said they had been concerned about his apparent uh, Performance. lack of training in the offseason <laughs> before he got to the NFL. What, but, like, I'm going to have to go with Joe Namath all time. All time. He won uh, one Super Bowl, really big game, but his stats just don't add up. I mean, even for other quarterbacks in his era, they just – yeah, no, Joe Namath. Okay. Could, could you say, though, that he had the most important win in NFL history because of the way it merged the AFL and the NFL? Maybe, but I also think the most important win because it ha- because it was a New York team. I yeah. just think New York talent gets way overrated. Preach. In Preach. general. Preach. Um, and mine, Ray Guy, punter for the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I I don't believe he is. He's not. I thought or he did, was. Did he go in recently? I don't. Because yeah. here's here's what made me think of it. And I mean, I grew up <laughs> in an era where he was like the hero. He yeah. was amazing. He was like he was like a folk hero. <laughs> Someone was going at Peter King on Twitter because everyone goes at Peter. K- they everyone loves to attack Peter King on Twitter, and they were saying that the the hall was a joke until Ray Guy got voted in. Why won't you vote for Ray Guy? And Peter King's response was, and I'm paraphrasing. Why would I vote for the 70th best punter in league history? <laughs> and look up Ray Guy's numbers. No way. He's he's he was good for his era. He was not great for his era. And you look at the stats of any active punter, and they're far better than his stats. Hmm. But he did have that one catch in like what was that the Super Bowl against yeah. the Vikings where he, he was yeah. real athletic. Well, it's, yeah. Yeah, that, and that's why I was also yeah. thinking like Lynn Swan on my list. Oh, interesting. Because yeah. I, I mean, he is was a really good wide receiver. Had a, some highlights. Yeah. They're still played on NFL films and whatnot. But you know, he he didn't match up even to the other some of the other uh, stalwarts on, yeah. on that on that club was far, by far superior. Right. I think I think also back in the seventies they were doing like full hitting at practice probably. three days a week so everybody yeah. even they were probably just teeing <laughs> off on namath yeah. <laughs> you, you gotta, gotta practice taking off. hits there you know joe who, you, but you know who joe wasn't it was no <laughs> steve de berg we've talked about that <laughs> oh my gosh please tell me please do your steve de berg impression please no 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 oh here's de berg running to the sidelines <laughs> do it oh he appears to have dislocated his finger again <laughs> did he do that last game <laughs> That guy would not go down. As Mark once told me, if you had DeBerg on your team, you only needed one quarterback. He was going to finish the season. Once a year, he'd take a snap and just, ah, like he got shot. His fingers going sideways, like, tape it up. He had a pin sticking out of his index finger one game. Because was, anyway. All right, uh, just a few more. Now, we recognize that you have to cover the Cardinals day in, day out. And yes. you're, you know, you're a reporter who has to and have to deal with these folks and, you know, yes, don't get you in trouble. So yeah. we don't we don't want the two political podcast knuckleheads to get you into trouble. So we're going to stay positive with the Cardinals. Okay. We have a positive Cardinals question. Yeah. And that is, if the Cardinals win a game this year, who's it going to be against? <laughs> oh man. I've I've wrestled with this. I asked Boomer Esiason in this on the podcast. I and this was when I thought Colt was healthy. Ugh. I mean, maybe the Rams. See, that was yeah. my. That's mine. I looked at the schedule yeah. and they've got them like the weekend of uh, of Thanksgiving. Yeah, they've got the Rams. Feels like a good spot for a letdown. Yeah. God bless the NFL did not give us that as a Thanksgiving <laughs> right. game. It's the Sunday or the CBS Five post game show. We have like yeah. six of them and it's going to be like. What do we talk about for two hours? I, I mean, Gannon's, we, we're going to run Gannon's press call. What's he going to say? Like, usually you rely on the on, on the coach to talk for like 15 minutes. Uh, I saw some reasons for optimism with some of the kids who came in late. Um, well, weather was nice today. Yeah. Okay, who is Kyler Murray playing for next year? I, I think the Cardinals, because I don't know how you get off that contract if, if you want to move them. Because I mean, Gannon has said this week he thinks he's a franchise quarterback. Now, we know he has to say that. He said last year he wanted to stay in Philadelphia. But who's, who's trading for Kyler Murray's contract coming off a knee injury? I mean, even if you want Caleb Williams, 
Which isn't What's a guarantee strategy? because now Caleb Williams is making some noise that he may not come out of college or right. he's going to go into a bad situation. Right. But, like, there's also been some talk, though, about the Dallas Cowboys. With Jerry Jones involved, you never know what's going to happen with that. Kyler's undefeated in that stadium. <laughs> yeah. He's a Texas legend. Yeah. I mean, is there a possibility Jerry Jones could, uh, you know, take the, you know, do that trick? Because yeah. that, that contract's <laughs> not going to look as bad next year as it does <laughs> This year. I'm just yeah. so if we're saying it would he's coming off knee surgery and with that contract it would be a really stupid thing to do. That seems to narrow it down to Dallas or my pick, which would be he would play for Las Vegas. Interesting. I mean that, that he could go just right up the road, right? Yeah. 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 I mean I, I oh, sorry, I was just looking at something real quick in, in my gambling line. Uh <laughs> no, no I, I mean I think the trade for Trey Lance, that sort of nullifies that in Dallas, but then he, yeah, you, like you, you said, he's un, but, I mean, but Trey's not in that, he doesn't have yeah. that big contract and yeah. it shows maybe Jerry Jones is interested yeah. in that mobile kind of mobile quarterback that they, they, right. you know, uh, yeah. They, I mean that Kyler Murray, cause the thing that upsets me and pisses me off all the time is that now that Kyler Murray has got this reputation of being a bust and that's unfair to that kid. No, he's he, fought his tail off. He's fought his tail off. He was, what we're learning is, is in a dysfunctional system under this coach and for, Two of his first three, uh, three, first three years in the league, he was a legit MVP candidate for part yeah. of those seasons. And now all of a sudden, oh, he's a bust? No. Like, yeah, he had a really terrible playoff game. But, like, you've got to look at the numbers. He improved every year. Working in what we, are, again, are learning was a dysfunctional, under a dysfunctional coach whose offense never changed. And it looks like a very dysfunctional organization with Steve Kime and Michael Bidwell at the helm. Yeah, no, I mean, I I, th- I I totally agree. I want to see Kyler get one more shot in a functional situation. I still think there are limitations of where he can throw the football, but and I also wonder is he going to be as explosive coming off this knee injury? I mean, yeah. that's that's something that you're going to be it's watching the whole time. And if yeah. you can't outrun somebody, that's going to be like you're going to see that clip four thousand times. So, yeah. yeah. All right, three quickies. Just yeah. uh, dipping down to college, and by the time anyone hears this. We'll already know if we're right or wrong on these. Texas versus Alabama. Who Texas. You got? Te- I think this is our year. I mean, we have we have the quarterback who got hurt last year, Quinn Ewers. He cut his hair just for this. You know, he wants to look like the NFL guy so he can get drafted next year. <laughs> cut off the mullet. Uh, I think this Bama is still Bama, but they're young. So I think okay. I, I'm 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 really confident. I don't bet against Saban, Alabama. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much with you there. I hate you guys. Uh, <laughs> I also don't bet on Steve Sarkeesian, <laughs> but. Uh, Did he have that weird? Was, it, was he the one? He was drunk on the yeah, sidelines. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 no, yeah. Whatever you're asking, yeah, he yeah. was. He was the one. <laughs> uh, Iowa versus Iowa State. There's um, only one answer. I don't know that I've dug into this one a whole lot. <laughs> um, only I'm one not sure answer. Kirk Ferentz has it's, either. It's a volleyball game. They do it. Soccer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Last time you're on football. this podcast, God. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, I guess I guess I man, Scene's gonna hate me if I pick against his guys. Who do I like better, you or Scene? Um, <laughs> Who has more power at the station? Uh, you know, <laughs> I haven't I haven't watched a lot of Iowa. I've watched enough of Iowa State to know with Matt Campbell that you're gonna get a pretty good game. How do you like your team this year? Well, again, last week as I've been describing was yet another you know long line of of a you know demoralizing victories for iowa well i'm Um, sorry they're good but you can they they won but you can still see in areas they really suck but that said iowa is going to destroy iowa state all right well for having me on this podcast mark it down iowa wins six to five yeah yeah i'll take (laughs) iowa by like two (laughs) which might mean five to three both of you Five, um, to th- five to three, take the under. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is, yes. Whatever you do, take the under. And, of course, uh, Oregon versus Texas Tech. I think, I mean, Tyler Shuck, that'll be very interesting. Is, is he starting? I haven't even yeah. checked. The Hamilton quarterback yeah. from Chandler here. Yeah. So that'll be super interesting. Who I, was at Oregon and didn't. Yeah. Let him to the Fiesta Bowl and played against Brock Purdy out here. We had the two Arizona quarterbacks. I mean, I think, I mean, Texas, Tech didn't win last week. Oregon. It wasn't great. I, I like I like Nick's a lot. I mean, I th- it seems like Oregon's got to get it all figured out after with a new offensive coordinator. Yeah. So, offense. I mean, they played yeah. Portland State in Week One. Yeah, wait, they won. Wait, it. Hold on a second here. In full journalistic, you know, credibility, you've got to disclose. Where did you go to school? Oh, Oregon. I thought it was Portland <laughs> and, State. I thought we were talking about Portland State. The well, big sky. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so please, we've got the Texas that. guy. We've got the Iowa guy. <laughs> what you didn't see. You didn't say anything about Iowa. I didn't go You're to Iowa. Iowa. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Well, I went to Oregon. He's gonna get the. He's gonna give the commencement address. Yes. At some there's point. a new offensive coordinator. Yeah. They put up 81 against Portland State in Week One. Yeah. So indicators are it's it's going pretty well. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I've got Oregon in that one. Yeah. It's only a six and a half point spread, which seemed odd to me given that. Oregon won big in Week One yeah. again against Portland State. I think I think Tech can and score, but Tech you can't. lost to Wyoming. No, but there's just it's just really hard to recruit defensive players to Lubbock, Texas. It's just it's really challenging. Yeah, yeah. Go Ducks! I think they win that. All one. right. Yeah. Okay. Now that's all I had. Yeah. Are you the guy who rides the motorcycle out with the duck? Have you ever done that? Is that no. your okay? <laughs> no. I've always wondered. No. Who that. No. Yeah. Now the big question is is who the the players for Iowa and Iowa State betting on. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. We we find out which way they're going. For those who know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they had an issue. Hey, Mark, thank you so much for Anytime. coming on here, man. Anytime. It was great having this you on the show. Fun. And yeah. thank you for letting us kidnap you here for a few minutes and uh, getting your insights into all of this stuff. So yeah. have a good one, man. Glad Thanks. to do it. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, the Google Store, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. See you next time.